to virtual story time. Yes, this week we are talking about, of course, our very favorite place, and I hope it's your favorite place too. We're talking about the, the library. library. We are okay. indeed open. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, so we are talking all about the library, so we hope that you will hang tight and enjoy these stories and a really good puppet show, and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye. So I'm going to read you a story called Lola at the Library. Lola loves Tuesdays. On Tuesdays, Lola and her mommy go to the library. The library opens at 9 o'clock, but Lola is ready long before that. She puts all the books she borrowed last week in her backpack. Her library card is also very important. The library is not very far away, so Lola and her mommy always walk there. Some of you guys like to walk here too, right? Lola and her mommy give back the books from last week. The librarian buzzes them through the machine. It sounds like a beeping sound. Can you say beep, beep? There is a special section in the library just for children. It is really cool and no one ever says shh. Sounds just like the rainbow room, doesn't it? Sometimes there is singing. Lola knows all the words and the hands for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and I know you guys do too. That's one of our favorites to sing. Sometimes there is story time. Lola loves that. Of course you guys do too. After story time, Lola chooses her books. In the library, she can have any books she wants. Lola likes stories with bears and anything with shoes. There are so many, it takes ages to choose. Mommy has some books too. The library bu librarian buzzes them through the machine, then stamps the date inside. Lola must bring them back in two weeks but she will probably be back long before then for more. Lola and her mommy always get a snack after visiting the library. Mommy has a cappuccino and Lola has juice. Whenever Lola has been good, her mommy lets her taste the foam. Mmm. Then it is time to go home again. Oh, she's seen a dog. What's a dog say? Does he say woof, woof? Every night after Lola is tucked in bed, her mommy reads her a story. It is the best way to end the day, of course. The end. And I'm gonna read you a story called Bats at the Library. Now, a while back we read one called Bats at the Beach. So this time the bats are in the library. Let's see what they do there. Another inky evenings here. The air is cool and calm and clear. We've feasted, fluttered, swooped and soared, and yet we're still a little bored. All this sameness leaves us blue and makes us ache for something new. Then word spreads quickly from afar. A window has been left ajar. That means it's being left open. Can it be true? Oh, can it be? Yes, that night at the library. The sky is lively as we race together toward our favorite place. Eager wings beat autumn air. Look, that's it. We're almost there. Then squeezed together wing to wing, we rocket through the opening. We waited for this night all year, but this is it at last. We're here. Look at them, they're flying all throughout the library. For most old bats, this isn't new. They've got lots of things to do. They'll flutter off and lose themselves among the books lined up on shelves. Other bats in munchy moods will study guides to fancy foods and hang out by a lamp instead to talk about the books they've read. But little bats will have to learn the reason that we must return. The ones who haven't come before have no idea what's in store. What do you think they're gonna do? 
Some of them will drift away and figure out a game to play, like shaping shadows on the wall or wingtip tag around the hall. Looks like they're having lots of fun in the library. This big box is loads of fun, blasting brighter than the sun. Instead of copying books from shelves, we can duplicate ourselves. They're putting each other through the copy machine. Doesn't matter where you look, there's nothing like a pop-up book. The fountain water's nice and cool and makes a splendid swimming pool. Please keep it down, you must behave. The library is not your cave. It's hard to settle down and read when life flits by at dizzy speed, but story time is just the thing to re rest a play exhausted wing. Even bats like story time. And if we listen, we will hear some distant voices drawing near. Louder, louder, louder still, they coax and pull us in until... Everyone, old bat or pup, has been completely swallowed up and lives inside a book instead of simply hearing something read. Does that ever happen to you when you're reading something so good and you just imagine that you live in the book? Look, they're all imagining different stories. Look, that one's on the yellow brick road, which means Wizard of Oz, of course. Breathless, lost within the tale, no one sees the sky grow pale. What is that light? A lamp? The moon? Our bookish feast can't end so soon. It feels as though we've just begun, but now we leave our books half done. Through the window into sky, it's much too late. We've got to fly. But maybe a librarian will give us bats this chance again and leave a window open wide to let us share the world inside. For now, we'll dream of things we've read, a universe inside each head. Every evening, one and all will listen for that late night call. Can it be true? Oh, can it be? Yes, that night at the library. The end. Miss Goose stamped my library book. She leaned across the desk. Our library is going to close forever, she whispered. Oh no, I said. Why? It's too old. It needs a new roof and new paint, Miss Goose said sadly. Hmm, I said. We checked out two books, How to Lay a Perfect Roof, and library painting for beginners. We read by day and we read by night. The next morning, we got started. We laid a perfect roof. We painted the library buttercup yellow with sky blue trim and a grass green door. Beautiful, we said. It is beautiful, Miss Goose agreed, but it takes a lot of money to run a library. We don't have a lot of money. Hmm, I said. We checked out a book called How to Make Money Fast. We read by day and we read by night. Then we had a bake sale and an art sale and we sold candy door to door. Oh my, Miss Goose said, that is a lot of money. But Goat owns the ground that the library sits on, and he wants it back. He can sell the land for even more money. We were flummoxed. How will we learn without a library? Mouse asked. We'll be ignorant, Skunk said, and an ignorant skunk is a very sad skunk indeed. Hmm, I said. Remember that it's the library we love, not the land it sits on. Let's find a book. We checked out a book called How to Move from One Place to Another. We read by day and we read by night, and then we looked for the perfect place for our library. 
We're going to move it to Buttercup Meadow, we told Miss Goose. Oh my, she said. Old Beaver owns Buttercup Meadow. He's a grumpy fellow, and he won't want to give up that meadow. His little grandson plays there every day. I rubbed my chin. Hmm, you say he has a grandson? Then and there, we checked out two books called Read to Your Grandkids and How to Speak Wisely and Well to Grumpy Old Beavers. We read by day and we read by night. We looked at pictures. We thought hard. Then we went to see Old Beaver in his lodge on Puddle Pond. What do you want? He asked. He was grumpy, all right. Rabbit turned tail and ran. But I spoke up wisely and well. Sir, I said, the library is closing. We would like to move it to your beautiful meadow. No, Old Beaver grunted, grumpier than ever. We know you have a grandson, I went on. I was fearful but determined. Where will he get books to read? With books to read, he'll grow up smart, Skunk said. And interesting, Squirrel added. He'll have fun, I told Old Beaver. And reading is something that grandparents and grandchildren can do together. Hmm, Old Beaver said. I opened the book that I'd brought. Look! Old Beaver peered at the picture. Those are ducks, he said. A grandfather duck and his grandson. I said, here's a baby chipmunk with his grandma. Old Beaver scowled. No beavers? Not yet, I told him, thinking quickly. We could send a picture to the publisher. We waited. Old Beaver slapped the deck with his broad, flat tail. We waited some more. At last, he smiled. Oh, all right. Let me get my grandson so we can take a picture. The next day, all of us, and some of the grown-ups too, got together and moved the library. Our library now sits in the meadow. Buttercups drift around its buttercup yellow walls. Its green door is always open, and above it is mostly sky blue. On rainy days, we stay cozy inside. On sunny days, we lie in the shade of a big whispering oak tree and read. We have story hour and parents bring their little ones. Old Beaver and his grandson come in the afternoon after they've had their naps. They look so content together. Mole has taken lots of pictures of them. And Miss Goose has found several books about beavers for the library. Badger didn't know how to read, so we're teaching him. Gopher lies on the grass and kicks up his legs. There's nothing you can't learn to do when you have books, he says as he reads one called Exercises for Gophers. Porcupine smooths down her quills. If you can read, she adds. I smile, and it's even better if you have a library. The end. back hello i hope that you enjoyed all those cool library stories and of course that great puppet show yeah and this week is national library week so we would love to see you if you want to come in we are open for express service masks are still required but we would love for you to pop in and say hi we miss seeing all of you um, otherwise you're welcome to come by curbside to pick up your materials and craft supplies so the video for the craft that miss cammy has for us this week will go up tomorrow and we hope that you have an excellent week, love your libraries, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.